After nasal polyposis, the commonest polypoidal mass seen in the nose is an androcoinal polyp. It is a unilateral polyp which goes to the coina or the posterior nose. So today I explain about androcoinal polyp. It's a very short uh, class of around 5 to 10 minutes. And I will explain on the etiology, then the pathogenesis, the histopathology of androcoinal polyp, the investigation and also the treatment and the differences between an ethmoid polyp and an androgonal polyp. Okay. And this uh, AC polyp is otherwise called a Killian polyp because Killian polyp, uh, this AC polyp was first described or the first paper of description of AC polyp was published in Lancet in 1906 by Gestab Killian. So it is otherwise called a Killian polyp. So if you come across any new ideas or new things, even if it is accidental, make more research on it and you publish it. There is every chance that you become a part of history. Okay. And um, this Killian polyp is uh, seen in Comparatively, it is younger age group, that is in 3 to 5th decade of life, more commonly seen in males compared to females. This uh, androcoinal polyp, as the name suggests, it arises from androm. So, maxillary androm is otherwise called androm of hymore. So, this arises from the maxillary sinus and it goes to the androm or the, uh, sorry, and it goes to the coina. Okay. So, from nose, middle turbinate, inferior turbinate, and uh, here comes the uh, maxillary sinus. So, this uh, polyp arises from maxillary sinus and it goes through the uh, accessory ostia most commonly and there are two ostia uh, a natural ostia and also an accessory ostia is present in a percentage of persons so this androgonal polyp if present is usually it is coming into the nose through the accessory ostia okay and from there it is going posteriorly so there is an andral part and there is a small nasal part and again there is a large coinal part, coina or the posterior nose. Okay, so it has got three parts, an androgonal polyp. So otherwise this can be, this can be compared to a bent sign or you don't know this one, the bent sign. Okay. So it is a trilo, uh, there are three lobes, trilobular structure of the androgonal polyp. And again, this has got a solid component and a cystic component. Okay, the part mostly seen inside the um, axillary sinus is cystic, and that going into the nose and into the coina is usually solid. But in an ethmoid polyp, nasal polyposis, it is usually a uh, solid component and the cystic components are not commonly seen in a case of nasal polyposis but the underground polyp has got a cystic part and a solid part. Okay, then what is the cause of this? Etiology is unknown but there are so many theories like chronic inflammation and also uh, allergy is seen in a very small percentage but in the case of nasal polyposis, the chance of atopy co uh, coexisting with the nasal polyposis is very high. But in the case of this androgonal polyp, the associated allergy uh, rate is very low. So another accepted theory, the recent accepted theory is that there is a phlogistic anatomical alteration at the osteomental complex or at the middle meat level. Phlogistic means something related to inflammation or infection. So there is uh, infection associated with an anatomical variation where at the osteomental complex area and also at the uh, middle meatal level. 
Okay, both are the same cell. Like in the area in the middle meatus where the um, anterior sinuses open, there we call it as an osteomeral complex. So this causes an already existing uh, asymptomatic cyst inside the maxillary sinus to come out into the nose. Already there is a uh, asymptomatic sinus cyst inside the maxillary sinus. And because of this uh, infection and anatomical alteration, this cyst within the sinus is pushed out into the nose. And then it goes posteriorly and becomes an androgonal polyp. And uh, there is some uh, examiners usually ask why this androgonal polyp goes posteriorly. Actually there are four reasons. One is the posterior nose is more roomy compared to an anterior nose. So it goes posteriorly because the coina is more roomy. Second one, because of gravity. You know anterior nose comes like this. So the middle, uh, middle turbinate and the inferior turbinate and your uh, coina. So anterior nose and the posterior nose. So this posterior nose or the coina is uh, a bit at the lower level than the anterior nose. So because of gravity this uh, uh, polyp goes posterior. So coina is more roomier than the anterior nose and also gravity pulls the uh, underground poly posteriorly and the third is usually it goes through the accessory osteum okay so the accessory osteum is this is natural osteum and this one is a accessory osteum so this accessory osteum is posterior to the natural osteum so it comes through the uh, accessory osteum and it goes posteriorly and also the fourth reason is the nasal uh, mucociliary beating, cilia beats from anterior to posterior. So there is every chance of this going posteriorly. Okay, so it is more roomier and at a lower level than the uh, uh, anterior nares. So depend, gravity dependent, then accessory osteum is posterior to a natural osteum and also the cilia beats from anterior to posterior. Okay, so that is why this uh, androgonal polyp goes posteriorly. The presenting complaints are similar to all other nasal masses. Mainly there is nasal block and the nasal block is initially unilateral. And as this uh, mass goes posteriorly, obstruct the coina and then it goes to the other coina. Then the nasal block becomes bilateral. And also there is rhinorrhea which is usually uh, Purulent uh, nasal discharge. It's not watery because you sh most of the cases this is not associated with the not associated with the allergy. So these two are the common complaints. Also there will be anosmia. Then snoring and mouth breathing will be there because the patient cannot breathe through nose. Then usually uh, if associated with an sinusitis, this will present as headache. Then halitosis. There will be occasional attacks of epistaxis and because it is going and blocking the posterior space, there will be dyspnea, dysphagia and also dysphonia will be present. So, but this nasal block initially unilateral and later bilateral and also the rhinorrhea are the commonest presenting symptom. And uh, uh, evaluation is mainly by uh, diagnostic nasal endoscopy, then uh, CT scan and MRI. The CT and MRI are usually complementary. In diagnostic nasal endoscopy using 30 degree or uh, 0 degree uh, rigid endoscope, the method I have already uh, explained in class on uh, diagnostic nasal endoscopy, you can see a unilateral mass uh, mainly going posteriorly uh, filling the coil. Uh, diagnostic nasal endoscopy of an androgon polyp you can see this is a coina on the left side and uh, you can see the polyp protruding from the other side into the coina. This uh, polyp with the eustachian tubal elevation on the left side.
and uh, here this is right side you can see the nasal part of uh, polyp middle turbinate this one is a polyp and uh, it is going uh, posteriorly and crossing through the uh, behind the posterior end of septum towards the other side it's a huge androgon polyp if it is small this uh, nasal part won't be this much of big this is a CT scan picture of an androgon polyp non contrast scan uh, non contrast CT scan of the uh, paranasal sinus is the preferred method so you can see a defined mass with the mucus density arising from the uh, maxillary sinus and also there is widening compare with this this is the normal side on the right side and here it's a left androgonal polyp so one there is a defined mass with mucus density and second there is widening of the maxillary sinus ostium and that is extending into the nasopharynx there is no associated bony destruction but rather there is a smooth enlargement of the sinus true coronal or a coronal reformatted scans are preferred and the stalk is not evident in a CT scan this is the axial uh, cut in a right androgonal polyp axial cut in right androgonal polyp here you can see the mass filling the uh, maxillary sinus and going through the accessory ostium into the coena infinite uh, turbinate and this coena it is going to the coena so CT scan is a preferred method non contrast scan okay this MRA and T1 uh, will show intermediate to low signal and T2 will give a high homogeneous T2 signal and the signal may vary in long standing cases and uh, in contrast enhanced with gadolinium enhanced uh, T1 it will give a peripheral enhancement you can see it here peripheral enhancement ok but uh, uh, MRI is always complementary to CT T1 intermediate to low signal and T2 will give a high homogeneous T2 signal with a uh, gadolinium contrast will give a peripheral enhancement as you can see in this case. So all these are the differential diagnosis. So usually this uh, androgonal in examination androgonal polyps are usually asked as short case. So you will be asked to uh, list out the differential diagnosis. So one is a mucus retention cyst. Usually this mucus retention cyst occur from the mucus secreting glands within the sinus mostly in the maxillary sinus. So actually it is an epithelial retention cyst and these are seen on the walls of the sinus and this will not usually this will not extend into the coina and you can very clearly see a crescent shaped rim of air above the uh, mucus uh, cyst and that will differentiate this from an uh, androgonal polyp. And second is a mucus and this mucosines are most commonly seen in the frontoethmoid sinus and very rare in a maxillary sinus and also this mucosine will not extend into the coin and this junior nasopharyngeal angiofibroma has got a very typical history it causes profuse painless and uh, uh, frequent bleeding from the nose painless profuse bleeding from the nose especially in an adolescent male child okay and uh, uh, by investigation by a uh, contrast and CT scan, you can very clearly differentiate an angiofibroma and also the morphology of angiofibroma is different from that of an uh, androgonal polyp. So, by doing a uh, contrast and CT, you can differentiate it from an androgonal polyp and also an angioma and any malignant tumors of the nasopharynx comes in the differential diagnosis. A sexual neuroblastoma, again a differential diagnosis. A sexual neuroblastoma arises from the olfactory uh, epithelium that is from the roof of the nasal cavity and this androgonal polyp is from the lateral wall that is from the maxillary sinus and it's coming into the nose and hypertrophic uh, turbinate usually a middle turbinate and that you can uh, very well differentiate clinically by doing a prob probing and in probing this uh, androgonal polyp consistency is usually soft 
but in a hypertrophic turbinate is usually firm and you can differentiate it by probing itself. So this you have to remember. Regarding the treatment of androgonal polyp, lots of debate is going on on the uh, method of treatment of androgonal polyp and the maximum evidence in this regard was given by Frosini et al. by doing an evaluation of around 200 cases by in uh, Frosini et al. Uh, done in University of Florence in Italy. So uh, they have compared three treatment regimes. One is simple polypectomy, that is avulsion of the polyp. Or another method is a carbon look. And third one is functional endoscopic sinus surgery with uh, powered instrumentation. That is by using micro debride. This, this simple polypectomy by avulsion, there is maximum chance of recurrence. Okay. And what about Cadbury look? Um, Again, there is chance of injury to the maxillary and also the uh, dental root centers. So, and also we are removing the entire uh, mucosa of the maxillary sinus in a carbolic operation. So, the mucosa that grows again is never normal. So, it's always better uh, to go with a gold standard of treatment that is a functional endoscopy sinus surgery using powered instrument. Okay. So this one is the gold standard, right? So this is a treatment of choice of an androgonal polyp. And this androgonal polyp, uh, what is the common site of attachment inside the uh, maxillary sinus? It can be posterior or it can be an inferior or it can be uh, medial or it can be lateral. And anterior attachment is very rare. So of this, the posterior attachment is the commonest and uh, around 92% of cases, this uh, androgonal polyp is attached to the posterior wall of the maximum sinus and the rare one is the anterior attachment. Okay, so doing a functional endoscopy sinus surgery, you have to remove the um, uh, polyp from the nose and also widen the uh, maxillary sinus ostium and usually I already told this is arising from the accessory ostium so if there is an accessory ostium you combine the accessory ostium with the natural ostium and go inside the maxillary sinus remove the uh, polyp from the maxillary sinus and also cauterize the stalk of the uh, polyp inside the sinus so functional endoscopy sinus surgery using powered instruments and also Cauterization of stock of the sinus, uh, of the polyp within the sinus. So then there will be less than, only less than 7% chance of recurrence. Or we can say that uh, recurrence after doing this is very rare. Okay, so these are the three treatment options and the preferred one is functional endoscopy sinus surgery. And we go for a simple polypectomy in avulsion only if these two methods are not suitable or if there is any problem for doing this functional endoscopy sinus surgery for the patient. Okay. But there is high chance of recurrence in an uh, avulsion polypectomy. And also uh, functional endoscopy sinus surgery can be combined the, uh, to a nasal and also a transcanine approach. If we cannot remove the... Um, polyp inside the maxillary sinus through a transnasal approach we can go through a transcanine approach canine force approach and can remove the stalk from the maxillary sinus okay so this is all about uh, uh, androgonal polyp I uh, other, other name is a uh, Killian polyp and I told about the etiology the uh, pathogenesis the differential diagnosis investigations and treatment thank you